Okay, and we cannot add Christ, we cannot add being born again to a false religion. You need to repent from the false religion and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't say, well, I'm, I'm still a Buddhist, but now I'm a born again Buddhist because I believe on Jesus. No, you got to stop being a Buddhist. And you know what? It's so funny. I'm always accused of preaching a salvation without repentance. Isn't that what people accuse me of preaching? They say, oh, Pastor Anderson preaches a salvation without repentance, a repentance-less gospel is this word that they've coined. It's kind of a mouthful to pronounce. But they claim that I don't preach repentance. Of course I preach repentance because I believe that if you're Roman Catholic, you can't just add Jesus to all your holy water and poo-foo dust and sacraments and just say, well, I'm also, well, I'm trusting Mary and I'm also trusting Jesus. No, you got to repent of the one and trust the other. If you're a Hindu, you have to stop being a Hindu and you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. When we're up on the Navajo reservation, we run into countless people who say, well, I believe in Jesus, but I also believe in peyote religion. And they're trusting both. They're both peyote religion and Jesus. They're both whatever and Jesus. Both. Well, I'm a Muslim and a Christian. You know, like, like uh, the nation of Islam tries to be like a hybrid of Islam and Christianity. No, the repentance that the Bible is teaching is to, to reject false religion and embrace the Jesus of the Bible. Embrace the salvation that is by grace through faith, that is the gift of God. And so when he says here, the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, what's he telling them to repent of? What's he telling them to repent of? Worshiping false gods, having these altars, right? Thinking that God or the Godhead or Godhood or divinity can be represented in gold, silver, and stone. Repent of that ignorance. Repent of that. Look, you ignorantly worship, he said. And then later he says, the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. What do they need to repent of? This is not a hard passage to understand. But you know what? I can't even count how many times I've seen a gospel tract that will literally quote Acts chapter 17, verse 30. God now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. And they'll say, you need to repent of your sins. Be willing to stop drinking, be willing to stop fornicating, be willing to uh, turn your whole life around and start following Christ with your life. And, and so now it's not faith, it's works. Because guess what? Following Christ and turning your whole life around, stopping sinning, stopping fornicating, stopping drinking, stopping smoking, you know what? That's hard work. It's work. The Bible says God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. In Jonah 3.10. And so this turn over a new leaf gospel is a works-based salvation. And you know what? These people who claim, Pastor Anderson preached a repentanceless gospel. Translation, Pastor Anderson preaches that repentance has to do with where your faith and trust is and what your religion is. Whereas we're teaching, it has to do with whether you're living a good, clean life by our standards. Because they don't repent of all their sins, do they? Because they'll be like, well, nobody's perfect. But, you know, you got to repent of that thing that I'm not doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because everybody's got their own sins. Look, certain sins are easy for us to abstain from, and certain sins are hard for us to abstain from, and for everybody it's different. Like for me, I'm not just craving cocaine or something. That's not even a thing for me. But you know what? Some people are craving cocaine. Some people are craving heroin. I'm not just... Oh, man, I got to have a cigarette. I got to have a cigarette. But there are some people, probably even right now, in this auditorium who are craving a cigarette right now. I'm not going to ask for a raise of hands, but it's out there. So what I'm saying is there are certain sins that are really hard for certain people. Some people are going to struggle more with drunkenness than others. Some people are going to struggle more with fornication than others. Some people are going to struggle more with gambling than others. You know, for me, you know, the only gambling that I ever got into was just on Zelda, just getting more rupees on the original NES Zelda. You know, that was the closest thing to gambling that I really got into. Okay. So the point is that, you know, different people are going to struggle with different sins. Some people are going to be more naturally prideful. Other people are kind of a meek personality, and they, that's not really a big thing for them. I mean, everybody has their sins they struggle with. So what you have is certain people that struggle with one sin, 
pontificating about how, when I got saved, I got all the way saved. Because they don't crave X, Y, and Z, but they do crave A, B, and C. And A, B, and C stands for, you know, Applebee's, Burger King, and Carl's Jr. a lot of times, okay? Because they sit there and say, oh, God took away them cigarettes from me. Never smoked another cigarette. Never, never wanted to smoke another cigarette. It's funny how much trans fat you wanted after that, though. <laughs> but the thing about that is that, you know what? Here's the thing. Some people I've talked to, they said quitting smoking was easy. Other people, quitting smoking is really hard. Hey, we had members who came to our church here and were dedicated, godly, soul-winning, fired-up members for years while smoking cigarettes every day because they were just like, I'm trying to quit. I'm trying to quit. I'm trying to quit. And then other people, you know, for them, it's easy to stay thin, right? But other people, man, it's hard to lose weight. And it's super hard, right? So look, everybody struggles with different things. You know, for one person, gluttony is a struggle. Another person, you have to fight them to get them to finish their food. <laughs> Who's had their kids and they just will, they just eat like a bird and you're just like, eat more food. Put up your hand. It's got to be more than that. I, it's like, <laughs> right? Am I right? Yeah, my wife's got both hands up now. You, when you have 10 kids, you, you can put up like, you know, you can put up a few different hands. Look, some kids, you're fighting them to get them to eat their food. I doubt gluttony is going to be a struggle in that child's life when you're trying to get them to eat, trying to get them to eat, okay? Someone else, you know, and, and look, the Native Americans struggle with alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they struggle with obesity and alcohol. Part of the reason is the chemistry of their body. Because for hundreds of years, they didn't eat simple carbs. They didn't drink alcohol. So this is a struggle for them. And the Bible says some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment. Some men they follow after. Likewise, also the good works of some are open to beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be in. These repentance preachers, they're so fake, they just get up and want to point out all the open and exposed sins that they're not doing, but then their sins somehow get a pass. Like, they can still be saved and do the sins that they're into, but the sins that you do, well, you didn't repent of those, so you must not be saved. This is all nonsense because salvation has nothing to do with what sins we do or don't do. You know what salvation has to do with? Whether or not we believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it comes down to. You can smoke like a chimney and go to heaven. You can weigh 900 pounds and go to heaven. You can do all manner of sins. And go, you can, but why? And I'm not giving you a license to sin, folks. And I like what somebody said. Oh, Baptists are giving a license to sin. Well, how are you doing without the license? Because they're still sinning. Without a, you're sinning without a license. You're going to hell. Hey, I'd rather have a license than be without the license because you know what? We're going to sin no matter what because there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. There's none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Even the apostle Paul said, man, I'm doing, I do things that I hate. And then the good things that I want to do, I end up not doing. Folks, we're not saved by works. We're saved by grace through faith. So don't let this repentance become a Trojan horse, you know, speaking of ancient poetry, to bring in works-based salvation. Right? right? You, they, they put it in and they sneak it in and they dress it up as just, well, you know, you don't have to stop sinning. You just have to be willing to stop sinning. And then I've heard them again get up and say, well, you got to be so willing that you will. <laughs> If you're willing, then you will do it. And then it just becomes confusion. And you have all these people doubting their salvation. No, look, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. You can know. If it were based on us, we wouldn't know. I don't know. So what's repentance in regard to the gospel? Repentance is turning from whatever false God you're trusting in and turning to the true and living God. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 1, 10 says, you turn from God to idols to serve the living and true God. That's repentance in regard to salvation. You got to turn from the idols to God. You have to turn from a works-based salvation to faith in Christ. Okay, but here's what they say. Turn from sin to God. What? How is sin a replacement for God? Is works a replacement for faith? 
Yeah, so you turn from works to faith. Are idols a replacement for the true God? Yeah, so you know you turn from God, or you, excuse me, that'd be bad, but you turn from idols to God. Why? Because these both these are both in the same category. You in this corner we have idols. In this corner we have God, right? So you turn from idols to God. Doesn't that make sense? Okay, what if I think I'm saved by works and I turn from trusting in my works, now I'm trusting in salvation by faith, right? I turned from religion A, Hinduism, to religion B, Christianity. Doesn't that make sense? Do you see how these things are the same category? That's repentance. Okay, so repenting from sin would be like, I turned from living a dirty life to living a clean life. Now those things are both in the same category, right? I turned from being a drunk to being a teetotaler. See, these things make sense, but what they're doing is they're mixing them. You're turning from sin to God. As if, the, that'd be like saying, I switched from Chevron to Chipotle. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Yeah. And don't give me some joke about gas, all right? I'm not interested. <laughs> you know, sit there and say, like, you know, hey, I, I turned from Walmart, I switched from Walmart to Geico. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Those things aren't in the same category. That doesn't, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I turned from sin to Jesus. What? Those aren't in the same category. That, that doesn't make any sense. That's not logical. Okay, and you know what it implies is that you can't be in Christ and sin. But guess what? The Apostle Paul was in Christ and he still sinned. Right. Folks, these, these people think that they're sinless? And then when you start saying, what do you teach a sinless perfection? Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. This is not sinless perfection. It's like, well, then what is it? It's a mess is what it is. It's confusion is what it is. Folks, the gospel is so simple, a little child's supposed to be able to understand it. It's faith in Christ. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so this is the repentance. How can anyone reading this passage in context walk away saying, oh, it's repent of your sins, from chapter 17, verse 30? Folks, did he ever, he didn't even mention, man, you guys, you guys are so drunk in this town. Boy, you men of Athens, you're hitting the ouzo, and you're drunk, and you're fornicating, and I don't like the way you dress, and, 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 and you guys are into gambling, and you, and you need to, it's time to repent, guys. It's time to repent of your sins. Is that what he said? Nope. You're, you're taking God's name in vain. You're looking on a woman to lust after her. You're bearing false witness against your neighbor. You're having abortions, and you know what? You need to repent now. Is that what he's saying? Folks, he's saying you, you have the wrong God. You need to repent and turn from the wrong God to the right God. Amen. So, if I, so if, well, Paul preached repentance. Well, you know what? I preached repentance the same way Paul preached it Amen. in chapter 17, verse 30 of Acts. And we could go to all the other mentions of repentance in Acts, and you know what you're going to find? The same thing. Right, right. The context determining the repentance, and it's never telling them to clean up a life of sin or be willing to do so. It's nonsense. And we could go to any of those verses.